Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. Look at that thing. It's like a monster from another planet. Yep. Nothing can stand in his way. Sidewinder to Copter Watchdog. Jungle test complete. How did she look from up there, General? She looked just fine, sweetie. What a machine. How did she handle? Like a breeze. Nothing can stop the Army now, sir. Okay, fine. That wraps up the tests. The relief crew is on its way by Heligen. Right, sir. I want you boys to know I think you've done a swell job. Thanks, sir. The sidewind is okay, but it'll be good to have a rest. You head for rendezvous point nine. The helijet will take you back to base. Point nine it is, sir. Sidewinder out. Well, guess that's it, boys. Trials are over. Oh, the sidewinder is just what the army needs for these bushfire wars that keep springing up. Yeah, I guess now we'll have the transport to get to the travel spots before they get too heated. That's it, Ralph. Uh, any word from the relief crew? Yes, sir. The helijet is heading for point nine now. Great. Okay, Captain. Take us back to base. Yes, sir. Well, 
I be glad to get back to base. And how? Three weeks in this tin can's not exactly my idea of heaven. Ah, it hasn't been too bad. But seeing nothing but steaming jungle every day could drive a guy nuts. Uh, but it's all over now. Now we can have a long rest. Sure. Heading for point nine. The relief crew can take this beauty back to camp from there. <laughs> Dog to Sidewinder. Do you read me? General Peters, the Sidewinder. It's gone. Disappeared. What? Get back there, Captain. And fast. <laughs> for the smoke. Wait, there's a hole down there. Copter watchdog to Sidewinder. Do you read me? Come in, Sidewinder. Uh, this is Copter watchdog. Uh, can you hear me? Come in, Sidewinder. Eh, no reply. They must be out cold. I hope it's only that, General. Copter watchdog from Relief Helijet. Go ahead, Helijet. At rendezvous point nine. No sign of Sidewinder. There's been some trouble. Head for reference 27 immediately. We'll need your assistance. Copter watchdog, out. What are we gonna do? I don't know. I'll try and reach Sidewinder again. This is Copter watchdog. Come in, Sidewinder. Acknowledge. Come in, Sidewinder. Right. Johnny. Hey, what hit me? This is Copter Watchdog. Do you read me? Hello, Copter Watchdog. This is Sidewinder. Sweeney, you're okay. Yeah, a few bruises, but we're all still in one piece. Thank heavens you're safe. Now, how does it look down there? We've tipped over on our side. That means we can't move. How far down are you? General, we're 300 feet down. 300 feet. Ralph, what do we do? The Sidewinder weighs upwards of 500 tons. We'll need some pretty heavy lifting gear. But this is the middle of a wilderness. It would take weeks to get equipment out here. Excuse me, sir. I'll have to move the copter clear. The heat is building up. If we hover here, we'll be needing a rescue team ourselves. Okay, Captain. Get her down beside the crater, Captain. Right, sir. The holly jet should be here soon. Yeah, let's hope we can work something out. Copter watchdog from Helijet. What gives, General? Shut down your engines and disembark. I'll fill you in on the details. Okay, Ralph, let's go. Turn off the motors, Captain. Yes, sir. What I'd like to know is how we got down here. Guess the ground just opened and swallowed us. Yeah, but how do we get out? This whole pit seems to be on fire. We'll be okay for a while. 
the automatic cooling plant switched itself on. But the atomic reactor was due for refueling. It won't hold out forever. Now, here's the situation. The sidewinder is on its side. Uh, can't we haul it out, sir? Now, talk sense, Lieutenant. The machine weighs 500 tons. No heavy lifting equipment could reach here inside of two weeks at the minimum. Couldn't we use the, the copter and helijet? We're talking about the Sidewinder, not about some thousand-pound field car. Begging your pardon, General, but I figure the first thing is to go down there and take a look. But that would be suicide. That pit is an inferno. One of the copters could lower me down on the line just long enough for me to assess the situation. I don't know me. It's, it's too dangerous. You could be burned alive. Well, if we don't do something soon, General, There'll be no could be about it for the Sidewinder crew. No. Oh, very well, Lieutenant. Make arrangements with a helijet pilot. And thanks. Atomic reactor operating at normal, Colonel. Swell, Frank. Let's hope it stays that way. Sidewinder from helijet. Lieutenant Mead here. I'm going to attempt a reconnaissance. So watch the temperature outside the machine. Gage reads 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't try it, you'll fry. If only he had some kind of protective clothing. His oxygen mask will help him to breathe, but it's not gonna keep him cool. Switching over to Lieutenant Meade's frequency, sir. Connect up to the tannoy speaker, Captain. I want us all to listen carefully. Meade won't get much time to talk. When he does, we've gotta get it right. Okay, let's go, Charlie. Yes, sir. I'll be waiting for your command. Fine. When I yell, you get me out of there fast. There goes a brave man, Ralph. <laughs> Okay, John, let's have a listen to him. Switching you through now. 100 feet down. I can't see a thing. The smoke is too thick. The temperature's rising. Let go more line. Hundred and twenty feet down. Hold on, Lieutenant. You can make it. Two hundred and seventy feet. Jeepers, my blood seems to be boiling. The smoke's too thick. I'm gonna... I'm gonna have to go down all the way. I'll only have a second. Be ready, Charlie boy. Okay, sir. Here we go. I 
can see it. Get me out, Charlie. Now. Get a stretcher. Hurry, Sergeant. I think this frequency should be put on priority monitoring. The situation could get pretty desperate. Why don't I shoot out there, Father? See if they want any help. Wouldn't take long. No, Scott. We can't go shoving our noses into this uninvited. For all we know, the Army might be engaged on a top secret operation. John. Yes, Father? John, I want you to keep this frequency clear. Down here, I'm going to put Scott on emergency standby. F.A.B., Father. All right, Scott, get down to Thunderbird 1 and get her ready for launching. I'm on my way. If the Army decide they want our help, we don't want to keep them waiting a minute longer than necessary. We... we could do it, sir. Take it easy, Lieutenant. You're in a bad way. I'll... I'll be okay. Get a line. Haul it upright. Get him into the shade. Keep the sun off him. Yes, sir. See to it, Captain. I'm going down to fix that line on Sidewinder. Begging your pardon, sir, but this is not your kind of job. There's no time to argue. No one's arguing, sir. You're a technical man. It's a question of a man best equipped to succeed. Eh, hey, he's right, Ralph. Anyway, you'll be needed here by the radio to give the necessary instructions to Sidewinder. If we can get it upright. Atomic reactor down. 20 points, Colonel. Down 20? That means the cooling plant is under strength. We'll be warming up in here from now on. Right. Sidewinder from Sergeant Reynolds. I'm coming down to try and slip a line over one of the machine's legs. The temperature outside is up to 265 degrees. Yeah, I'll have to work fast. If I make it, we'll be able to haul you upright. Great. Then maybe we can climb out of here. <laughs> Okay, Charlie, let's go. down. Speed it up, Charlie. The shorter time I'm down here, the better. Hold it. I, I'm 300 feet down. Can you reach the sidewinder? I don't know. I, 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 I can't see much. Move it over, Charlie. Straight ahead. Slow and easy. Until I yell. I'm ten yards away. Reynolds, now you okay? Okay! Still alive. 
Okay. Now drop the new line as close to us as you can. Then get Reynolds and Lieutenant Meade to base hospital. And make it fast. We'll take it from here. Yes, sir. Hitch the cable to the captain, Ralph. Right, General. Thanks to the Lieutenant and Reynolds, we'll soon be out of here, boys. Copter watchdog from Helijet. Heading for base hospital, General. Right. Use all speed. Those boys need attention. Okay, Captain. Get moving. We've got to get the Sidewinder up its side. Did we make it or not? Sidewinder from Cup to Watchdog. What is your attitude? It's no good, General. We're back on our side again. But if we sure a good try. There's only one thing left to do, General. I'll go down there and try again. I don't like it, Ralph. Two brave men have been badly injured in that pit. I don't know if I should risk another life. But we must keep trying, General. There are three men trapped down there. If only we weren't so darn far from civilization. We'd stand a remote chance of effecting a rescue, but... He said rescue, General. That's the answer. Yeah. That's the answer. Calling international rescue. Calling international rescue. This is General Peters, U.S. Army. Vital defense weapon, in immediate danger. Crew of three trapped. Go ahead, John. Father, General Peters has just radioed in. They do want our help. All right, John. Tell them we're on our way. Yes, Father. Scott, it's action station. Thunderbirds are go. F-A-B. Changing to horizontal flight. International rescue outfit. I'm certain they're doing their best, sir. Yeah, I guess they are. But I'm worried about those guys down there. International Rescue Space Station. This is Thunderbird One. Have you had any more information, John? Information today tells us that this machine fell into a crater some 300 feet in depth. It is a blazing inferno. The machine weighs some 500 tons, and it's on its side, which means it can't move. Origin of crater unknown. 
That means we'll need the heavy gear, and since we don't know much about this crater, uh, we ought to have brains along. Go ahead, Scott. Latest information from Space Station indicates need for Thunderbird 2 carrying Pod 5, and we'll need brains along. Right, Scott. Okay, Virgil. Brains, you heard him. We're on our way, Father. Pod 5 it is. Pod 5. Okay, brains, here we go. plan standing up, Johnny. Well, I checked a minute ago, and she'll only hold out for a couple of more hours. How long will the hull stand up to that heat outside? General Peters, sir, there's a call coming in for you. Thunderbird 1 to General Peters. I've started your position on radar. Be with you in four minutes. It can't be too soon for us, pal. Oh, the heat from that crater is fantastic. You're gonna find it tough going. Say, the temperature's rising. There's some smoke getting in. The hull has cracked. She'll break up. Start the air purifier and try to plug those fractures. I'll increase the cooling plant output and try to cool the walls. General Peters from Thunderbird 1. Is there any news from the trapped men? I'm uh, afraid not. Their radio failed 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Can you increase the air purifying system? The exhaust fans at full power. The cooling plants at full stretch, too. <laughs> well, let's hope it holds out. How are you doing with that crack, Johnny? These soaked rags are helping, but the heat is terrific on the hull. Keep at it, boys. We've got to hold on. Well, what's the score, General? How long can these fellas hold out? 
They've got full air conditioning and a cooling plan. But at full power, it can't last more than another two hours. Right. Other members of our organization will be arriving soon with heavy rescue equipment. Meanwhile, I'll set up our remote TV camera so that we can take a look and see what goes on down there. Thunderbird 1 from Thunderbird 2. How does it look? Well, I'm about to send the remote camera into the crater. It'll give us an idea of what we're up against. Right, Scott. See ya. Okay. The camera's specially constructed to withstand extreme heat. Good. It's working fine. Thunderbird 1. Virgil here. Landed at rescue zone. What's the next move? I'm on my way over. Tell Brains to stand by. This is a tough one. Right. This is hopeless. As soon as the heat dries the rags out, will they catch fire? <laughs> well, it, at least it stops some of the smoke. Gee, this heat's getting un unbearable. Oh, what's keeping those guys? It's about time we had some action from them. I guess they're doing their best, General. It's a tough thing we're asking them to do. What's that? Uh, uh, that's it. Uh, that confirms it. Well? Well, uh, uh, way back in the past, this must have been uh, an open cast mine. Uh, when it was exhausted, a large craters would have been left. And it was used as a dump for military equipment after the Second World War. That explains the U.S. Army wreckage. Well, I still don't get it. Well, I I I'll show you uh, on this diagram I've drawn. Um, the pit was filled in, and over the years, a new crust of topsoil has formed. A spontaneous combustion caused a, a slow, smoldering fire, consuming the dumped equipment. Uh, and now the weight of the sidewinder caused the thin crust of topsoil uh, to collapse uh, at its weakest point. We have to remove the remainder of the crust so that the sidewinder can be dragged up the side of the pit. At the bottom, Scott. Right, Virgil. Can you see the sidewinder? No. The smoke is too dense. Whew. It's like the inside of a blast furnace down here. Starting to lay charges. Okay, General, you can draw on the cable and get clear of the smoke. Virgil's at the bottom. But how are you gonna get him out of there? Uh, well, we have a machine we call the mole, General. Uh, Scott is about to operate it. Uh, Y you'll see it in action.
Thunderbird 2 lab. From Moore. Proceeding to drilling position. <laughs> from Virgil. One more charge delay, Scott. Good. Be with you in a few minutes. Thunderbird 2 from Moore, burrowing at 70 degree angle. Do you read me on tracker screen? Uh, loud and uh, clear, Scott. Uh, right, right, four degrees. Four degrees. FAB. Turn made. I've come up against an obstruction. Uh, it, it's hardcore granite, Scott. Uh, uh, detour, uh, two degrees left. Then return to uh, original course. Maybe. Move from Virgil. Final charge laid. Okay, Virgil. Approaching side of crater now. Uh, th three degrees uh, left, Scott. Uh, then you should be through. Thanks, Brains. Going much easier now. We'll be breaking into pit in a few seconds. Uh, fine, Scott. Uh, ready to detonate explosives uh, on your instructions. Ready to emerge into crater. Okay, Virgil, come aboard. Okay, Scott. Approaching you now. Thunderbird 2 lab from Mole. Virgil, aboard. Uh, uh, right. Uh, prepare to withdraw. Okay, Brains. Are you ready, Virgil? Taking up rear cabin position now. Operating reverse motors. <laughs> Okay, Brains, we're clear of area. Go ahead. Uh, detonating charges now. What are they trying to do? Blow us out of here? Only a few more minutes, and a cooling plant packs up. What's holding you guys up now? My men down there have less than two minutes left. We're doing the best we can, General. Uh, uh, lab to recovery vehicle one. Uh, are you in position, Virgil? Nearly ready, friends. Recovery vehicle one. Power okay. 
Remote control vehicle to operation positive. Moving out now. Ready to fire magnetic lines. Uh, uh, remote guidance, a seven left, a four, a right, right. This is it. We're breaking up. Electromagnets in position. Recovery vehicle engines in transmission. Control vehicle skidding again. has failed. I'll have to wind it in and fire again. Firing again. Let's hope it's not damaged. Line in place. Starting motors again. It's a miracle. They've, they've got us out of the pit. I 
you doing, fella? Just great, mister. You must be the guy who hauled us out of that pit. Oh, one of them. The others are about to leave. I'll never know how to thank you, buddy. You saved our lives. The Colonel's right. Forget it. I'm glad we could help. All you've got to do now is get well again. How about the other man? Guess he's out cold. Uh, he'll be okay. Uh, mister, guess he'd have liked to have been awake. So I'll say it for him. Thanks. Thanks for all of us. Scott from Thunderbird 2. About to lift off. See you back at base. FAB. Sidewinder saved and no casualties. What can I do to thank you? All part of the service. But if you want to help, just make sure that no one tracks our aircraft. It is vital that our operation remains a closely guarded secret. That, Scott, is the least we can do. Thanks. Thank you. Boy, what I'd give to have those guys in my force. <laughs> 